Are you destroying your dynamic range in your video footage? See, everybody talks about camera dynamic range. You know, this camera is better than that camera because it has more stops of dynamic range. It has 15 stops versus 11 or 13. But what does that matter if you're missing these two factors and you're actually destroying your dynamic range? The first one's very obvious. So we're gonna skip past that one, but I'll mention it. It's obviously you have to nail your exposure because if your exposure is completely off, you've already lost shadow detail or highlight detail uh, that you're never gonna recover. But for this video, we're actually gonna focus on the second factor, which is how you're managing your file when you get it onto your computer, into your editing system. I'm gonna show you what not to do and I'm actually gonna show you visually on the scopes how it's destroying your footage. Let's get into it on the computer and get you making better footage. Okay, so this is our footage straight out of camera from a Sony A6600. Let's start uh, by enabling the first color space transform node that we have here. So if you're not familiar with a, a color space transform, for good measure, I should just quickly show how you would handle this. You would normally go up into effects here and just do a search in your library for, you can start with color space, and then you'll get up color space transform. I'm from Canada. I don't spell color like this normally, but uh, this is how you spell color if you wanna find this. So you would normally drag this, and then you're gonna get this. Um, if it's still on this screen, just make sure you're clicking on settings, input color space, input gamma, output color space, output gamma. Now, what I'm gonna show you here today, we're gonna to be able to save as a preset later. I'll show you that at the end. Uh, so you won't have to do all of this work all the time. The main two bits of information you're gonna need from any camera or smartphone that you're recording with is what is the file type um, as far as color space goes. So um, this is from an A6600 and I used a Cinephore profile. Uh, other footage I've used before, uh, S-Log3, um, which is an actual log format, so you would handle it slightly differently. But basically the input color space is still Sony S gamut 3 dot cine. And the input gamma is Rec 709 because it is a Rec 709 file. Even though it's a flat looking file, these Cinephore files, they're still a Rec 709 file. So everything else, like I say, I'm gonna show you here, it's gonna look like a lot of information, but it's not, uh, you don't have to actually remember all of this because it's gonna be the same on every project that you set up. So output color space, is DaVinci Wide Gamut, because this is the color space that we want to work in because it's going to give us the most flexibility um, or a lot of flexibility. I haven't measured every color space to see which will give us the most, but anyway, it gives us a lot of flexibility here. And then your output gamma is DaVinci Intermediate. So basically, it's like a pipeline. It came in from our camera with particular uh, color space, and then we're going to convert it to this color space, which is our working color space. And then, so of course, we need it to go out as well. So at the end of this, we have to create another color space transform, which will pick up where we left off. So remember, we left off changing it from a Rec 709 type file into DaVinci Y Gamut. So we're gonna say, we're looking at a DaVinci Y Gamut with an input gamma of DaVinci Intermediate. And then our output, which is gonna go probably to the internet or like a variety of different uh, delivery formats are generally going to be Rec. 709. It's going to be Rec. 709. And then your output gamma will be gamma 2.4. So this will stay the same. If I enable all of these nodes, then, now you can see we've got a pretty nice grade going. Um, and if I grab one of these nodes, uh, let's just do the one just before the output. Could be any one of them, but uh, like the LUT one here, I'm only using like uh, an output a key output of like 0 0.250. So it's not, give, not gonna give us the full effect of that particular node. So let me get a, just a normal node here. And if we look at our scopes, watch what happens when I grab my offset and I slide it up. See, as the highlights start to come to the top, they start to compress. They don't just cut off, they start to compress. We're actually getting a really nice roll off of the highlight information before it actually starts to cut it and blow out completely. So this is an extreme example, 
but this is why you're not breaking your footage as easily or as quickly because you can push your footage a little bit further um, when you're working on the internal part of this color space with your input and your output being transformed. So now we can get the same kind of result on the bottom end, on our shadows and our blacks. Before it actually cuts it off, it just kind of squishes it down as much as it can. It compresses it as much as possible. See? So I'll just reset that. Okay, and watch what would happen if I did an adjustment like that at the end of this tree, or even at the beginning, it would, I can show you that as well. So if I disable all of these, and I just, let's say, create a node. So here, if I just bring up my offset this way, watch what happens to the highlights. They just cut off, there's no attempt to retain them at all. None at all, which is why you don't want to operate without doing a color space transform at the beginning and at the end. So let me just show you a couple other examples um, just because I have a different kind of footage here. Here I have some Osmo Action 4 footage. Let me disable all the nodes here. I'll just enable my input and I'll show you what's going on here. We have our Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4. Now this is the D-Log M in my DJI Osmo Action 4. Uh, Action 5 Pro would be the same. Now, they call it like a log, but it's not actually a log format. It's more of like a flat, low contrast format. So this is actually Rec. 709. It's important to know these details. Um, and when in doubt, if it's kind of like final looking footage, it's probably Rec. 709. So I'm gonna use Rec. 709 here and my input gamma at gamma 2.4. And the same deal with the last one. It's output color space is the same as DaVinci wide gamma. That's what we want to work in. And output gamma, DaVinci intermediate. And then at the end of this tree, same deal. This node is never really changing because we're picking up uh, on the wide gamut, DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate that we're working in. And now we're going to output it to a delivery format of Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. Grab this uh, node here and I demonstrate the way it's just kind of compressing the highlights as I go up, compressing the stuff as I go down. So let me just show you what we would do to make this easier for you. Um, so I'm actually on a group, uh, a post group here. So let's just say I take this shot out of the group. I'm gonna remove from group. So now it has nothing. And I'm gonna Alt S there, put that back on the timeline, put the clip here. Okay, so now I've got this clip level thing, but nothing's happening. If I disable that, uh, control D, control D, on off and on, nothing happens. So I've got nothing going on on this one. So let's create a color space transform, and then we're gonna save it. I'll show you how we save it as a, uh, as a preset that you can use across all your different projects. Okay. Uh, okay, we already have this, so I'll just do it again. Color space transform, grab that drag and drop, and the input color space is Rec. 709. Rec. 709, input gamma, let's do gamma 2.4. The output color space, as we said before, we want to use DaVinci Y gamma always. The output gamma, uh, DaVinci Intermediate. I say always um, that we want to use that, but there are other options, but start with this. It's it, unless you have a specific reason to use some other kind of uh, working color space. The idea here is that we're getting into something that has a lot of latitude and gives us uh, a little more room to create and push grades. Okay, so let's create another node, Alt S on PC here, color space transform. Actually, let's name this first one too. We're just gonna uh, node label, we'll call it a CST for color space transform. I'll name this one the same. You can name yours or whatever, but it's good to know at a glance what something is. If you use a LUT, I put LUT. Um, I don't like using LUTs. Anyway, input color space. Uh, like I said, we picked up where we left off, so we're gonna use DaVinci Y gamut which is after our grade, after our corrections and coloring, 
uh, and DaVinci Intermediate. That's what we're picking up. Output color space is going to be Rec 709 as well. And Gamma 2.4. Okay, there we go. So this can be used for our action camera, but it can also be used, I have a Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. So it would be basically the same here because it would be a Rec. 709 footage as well. Of course, what I would do and the way I would have to manipulate those two different types of files would be vastly different, but because of their color science within, within there, but they are Rec. 709, so we're starting in the same spot. So now we wanna save this out to be able to use across all kinds of projects. Now we have our, we're in our stills folder up here. If you want to expand this, you have a little icon over here. And if I right click here and hit grab still, I can reuse this within this project. But what I actually want is to be able to reuse this in any DaVinci Resolve project from today moving forward. So to do that, we're gonna select Power Grade because these are available to all projects. So let's do that same deal though. You just right click here and hit grab still. Another way you could do it is go to color, stills, grab still, or use the uh, shortcut key that it tells you here. So now I'm gonna rename this here, this still, uh, which is preset. Um, you can think of it like a LUT kind of thing. Change label. I will call this uh, Rec 709 CST. If I wanted, like if I knew for myself what I meant by that, you could even do, if there's a couple of things that you're gonna do on all kinds of file, like on every file from that particular camera, you could, you could just call it the camera, right? Like Osmo Action 4 CST. Anyway, as you can see, it's holding together this footage like incredibly. Like if you're not doing this, there's a good chance you're breaking your footage really early or a lot earlier than than it should. The Osmo Action 4 is 10 bit, but this Sony A6600 footage, this is 8 bit. So when you really wanna be able to push it, uh, it's not gonna go as far as 10 bit maybe, but definitely do yourself a favor and make sure you're doing this. Pretty easy, right? Well, I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit that like button for me. Really appreciate that. And I will see you in the next one.